Hello and welcome to the Thursday, September 14th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Let's start today with a blog post by Kaspersky that hasn't really gotten a lot of attention, but I think should probably get a little bit more attention. And that's a malicious free download manager for Linux that apparently has infected a good number of victims and has been available for download for the last three years. This software free download manager is usually distributed via a website free download manager.org and currently the website uh, does distribute what appears to be a non backdoored version. But according to Kaspersky's uh, post, it appears that in the past, sometimes when you clicked on the download button, you were redirected to the malicious version of uh, this software, which was hosted on FDM pkg.org. It is, of course, difficult to figure out that this only sometimes happens and happened only in the past. What helped Kaspersky here is that there are tutorial videos on YouTube that show how to install this free download manager on your system. And the screen recordings in these tutorial videos actually show the redirection to the malicious version after first clicking on the download button on the legitimate free download manager.org uh, website. The malware does include the legitimate software, but as part of the install scripts that come with the Debian package, there's also a DNS based backdoor and a bash stealer being installed. The bash stealer is trying to get a hold of passwords, crypto wallets and such, and then exfiltrating them. All of this uh, takes cron jobs uh, to run and actually one thing that Kaspersky observed is that users then often complain about some issues that uh, show up because of these cron jobs like difficulties shutting down the system. So if you're suspecting that you're affected by this particular issue, take a look at Kaspersky's blog post. It has all the indicators of compromise, like hashes, file names, and IP address and domain names that you may want to look for. But remember, it may have happened any time over the last three or so years. Yesterday, I mentioned that there's an update for Adobe Acrobat and Reader, but I forgot to mention that the vulnerability being patched here is already being exploited, which will probably raise your speed here to actually patch this vulnerability. Since I mentioned Adobe, also want to mention that Foxit, a popular alternative PDF reader, also received an update also patching vulnerabilities but as far as i know according to the advisory these vulnerabilities have not yet been exploited and sentinel one has a blog post with well a yet another sample of mac os malware they're calling it meta stealer it's an info stealer so stealing again passwords and the like it is used in targeted attacks. The attack scenario that they're describing here based on victim reports is that the attacker will actually first sort of start a fairly elaborate email conversation with the victim and then later in the conversation, so not as the first message, but after some trust sort of has been established, the attacker will then send the malware, which claims to be a PDF, but is actually a disk image. Now, if you double click on it, in most cases, uh, the malware is not signed according to Sentinel-1. So you'll get all the warning pop-ups. But I guess if this is someone that you have communicated with for a while, so you have that trust relationship that then tricks users into actually allowing the malware to install. The malware is written in Go and compiled for x86, meaning that any Mac M1, M2 users will need Rosetta installed. Uh, but I think at this point, at least from my experience as an M1 user, you pretty much always have Rosetta installed to run x86 binaries because there are just always a couple of them still around that you need to use. 
Remember how the one vulnerability I pointed out on uh, Patch Tuesday was related to NTLM hashes leaking in the preview pane? Well, it looks like Microsoft is now finally starting to root out NTLM hashes in Windows Insider, which is sort of the preview version of Windows 11. They now add an option to block SMB NTLM hash use altogether. So this will likely show up in Windows 11. If you want to play with it, you will see the link to the blog post from Microsoft in the show notes. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.